Hey guys, welcome to another edition of Chroma Digitizing. On today's episode, we're going to be comparing the complex fill differences between Inspire and Lux. You're not going to believe your eyes. Right off the bat, there are over 340 different types of complex fills that you can do on Lux. When it comes to Inspire, you can only do about 10 of them. All right, so we're going to get right into it. On the screen right now, I have uh, several different types of complex fills that you can do with Chroma Lux. So we're going to start off with Chroma Lux today. Um, let's start with the standard. In the standard mode, these are the nine different types of complex fills that you can do. So when we click here, there is this is the tatame complex fill. You've got your brick, corn, pattern one, pattern two random this is satin it's not complete because once the satin gets to a certain a distance it won't finish it so you really can't do complex fills on too many things if it was thin it would be able to do it then we have our smooth and finally our zigzag so this is for the standard when it comes to emboss emboss is another fantastic complex fill that you can use and these are just some of the examples i think there's over 140 there are, there are over 200 different types of emboss that you can use. So I've just selected a couple of them just so you can see. We can take a look at this one. This is just number 100, and they go by numbers. They don't really have uh, different names, but these are all the different types of embossing that you can do. Let me just zoom in on it so you can see. We're going to take a good look so you can see everything that it can do. So all these patterns are already pre-done on your machine, and you can pick the type of embossing that you need. And these all go by numbers, and I think I skipped like every other five. But there's over 200 of these different types of embossing. Some of them look really, really nice. Like this one has stars, right? You can do that. Uh, that, that one looks really cool. They're all very, very interesting different types of uh, complex fills that you can do. So that was embossed. And like I said, there's over 200 of these different types of fills that you can do. When it comes to motif, Chroma Lux has 140 different types of motifs that you can do. So what you would do is you would select the item that you would want, right click, convert it to a complex fill, and then you would go over here and change it from a motif. And here you can pick the different type of motif that you want. Now the cool thing about this is that you can even create your own motifs. If you look at this little one right here on the bottom, that happens to be a Mickey Mouse motif. And here we have a rope motif. And this is the rope that I, uh, the weave that I had created for the hat. So you can change almost any of these motifs into a complex fill to get a really nice looking background. Furthermore, you can also use the dimensional feature to give it a three dimensional look where it looks almost like uh, a sphere, which makes it look 3D. So I think that's really, really neat. So when it comes to the motifs, you have 140 different types. Then we're going to move on to shapes. What shape does is depending on the shape that you pick, you have a circle, diamond, square, or star. Uh, it will, there's a heart, there's an oval that's horizontal, there's an oval that's vertical, and there's also this hexagon. Whatever shape you pick, it's going to draw this shape inside of it. So whether it's a circle, triangle, it doesn't matter. It will include any of these shapes, and you can pick the shape right here. So if I click on one of them, let's click on one of them. These are the different types of shapes that I can do. See, I have a circle, diamond, square, star, heart, uh, horizontal, oval, vertical, oval, and the uh, this is an octagon, actually. And depending on the density that you select, you can change the look of it. So, for example, if we go here and we go to our square one and we decrease the density, you'll see it's just going to make it tighter. That's all. So, once again, that's uh, eight different types of shapes that you can pick. Then we go to Echo and Contour have very similar properties. Essentially, they take the edge that you have created and they repeat it inside of itself. So it almost looks like an infinity mirror. So you can see the square. It made a whole bunch of squares, uh, just one inside the other. Same thing with the circle, same thing with the square, uh, this diamond and the star. But the difference between this and shape is that with the shape, it's one single line that it continues, whereas Echo, it actually repeats the shape over and over and over. All right, so that's a slight dis difference, and you can always change the density to make it look a little bit different. Then we go to stippling. 
for all you quilters out there, stippling is fantastic because you can change the style of stippling. When we click on the first one, there are three different types of stippling that you can do. There's the Hilbert. Oh, let me click it. This is the Maze. And finally, we have the Piano. So three different types of stippling, and you can use these for your quilting. If you have some square blocks that you want to quilt, you can use your sash frame or your largest frame. Put this in and program your stippling, and it's going to come out really nice, and you really don't have to draw. It's already done for you. And again, you can change the density or the stitch length to make it look, to give it the look that you want. Then we have Wave. Wave is really interesting because it has that Florentine effect where uh, here I have a wave, and this is just how it comes uh, from the factory. This is what this, the file looks like without any type of manipulation. If I go here to my uh, shape tool and I actually click on the shape, if I click on my, if I click on the shape tool by manipulating these points, I can change the form of the wave to make it look like this, to make it look like that, or like this one. So all it is, I can just show you real quickly, if I kind of manipulate this point this way, and I manipulate this point and I right click, it's gonna change the form of the, of the shape. And again, it's just a matter of manipulating your points and you'll change the shape. Also, you can actually drag them and even drag the curves as well to make them do you know, kind of crazy things. And this looks really neat. Sometimes it gives you contour. You can add shading or perspective lines to make things look really nice without having to digitize too much. This is a quick way to get that done. So that was the wave. And it's one single wave, but depending on how you manipulate it, you can change the form to make it do what you want. Then we have the grid. Here, this is a grid, and it's exactly what it is, a grid. It's a square pattern, and depending on the density, you can make it bigger or smaller. Uh, this is a double, so it goes over it twice, and this is a triple. So those are your choices when it comes to the grid. You have a, a single grid pattern, double, and a triple. Here we have radial. Now, radial is very interesting because it uses your standard complex fills, but it makes them in a radial format, so in, in, a, in a circle emitting from the center moving out. So this is the regular tatame fill. This is your brick corn. Uh, this is pattern one, pattern two, smooth or random. So it's the same fills that you had before in standard, but it uses them in a way and it makes them in the shape of a, a, not a star, but almost like, a, you know, the burst. It's bursting from the inside out and gives you a radial pattern, like the spokes of a wheel. All right, so that's the radial. Then we have Varsity. Varsity is very interesting because it gives it the chenille look. And the really interesting part about Varsity is the way that it embroiders. So if I were to play this out for you, most of the complex fill you've seen them, they kind of start from left to right and go one way, and it's really predictable. But this one is pretty interesting. Look what it does. It's just going to do all these random patterns and you know leave some loose threads in there so that it looks like chenille, and I think it looks really neat. It's a little bit different than smooth, a little bit different than random, because random uses different stitch lengths, but this actually just fills it all in in a bunch of different directions, which is really interesting how it does it. So that is the varsity file, to give it that chenille look. And finally, on the Complex Fill uh, World Tour, we have plaid. So in this, we have four different types of plaid. This is the cross. We have the diagonal, diamond, and the diamond two, which is just a little bit longer. In addition to this, you can also make it multicolor. So you can take it and make it multicolor like this. Uh, and also there's another one called diagonal and border, which it'll add a little border to your screen, or it will add a border to the design and kind of close it all off. So that was plaid. So all in all, when it comes to Chroma Lux, you have over 340 different types of complex fills that you can use. Now we're gonna move into Chroma Inspire. All right, here we are, we have Chroma Inspire. So let's create a complex fill design. So we're gonna go and pick the ellipse. I'm gonna hit my command so I can get a nice perfect circle. Now before I can convert this to a complex fill, I have to tell it to, I have to select it first and convert that into a fill. And then I'm going to go to my art tool and that will convert it into my complex fill. So you see the process is a little bit more daunting. It takes a little bit more time, but nevertheless, I have my complex fill. Now, when we go over to the fill type, 
these are my choices, standard. But the patterns, let's, let's pick the actual fill type in the middle. In the complex fill tool bag of Inspire, we have the standard complex fill, and these include, but not limited to, brick corn, pattern one, pattern two, random satin smooth, tatame, and zigzag. So yes, you can change them to these different styles. You can change the density to get the different looks that you want, but that's about all you can do. You really don't have the plethora of complex fills that you would have in Chroma Lux. So although Chroma Inspire will kind of get the job done, Chroma Lux really steps it up a notch and allows you to do really, really fantastic different types of designs to really give your own personal touch to your digitizing. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you like the content that we're creating here at Rakoma, make sure you like, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so we know when we're coming up with the next great content. And as always, if you have any comments or any tips and tricks you'd like to share with us and your fellow viewers, please leave them in the comments below and we'll be happy to spread them around. Anyway, you guys have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.